Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Saturday, January 7th, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's jump right into VR News and start with a chat about cars. Now, I've got a journeyman mechanic brother who is a car buff. For me, cars have just been functional utility devices. Get me from point A to B safely, cheaply, etc. Until just this last two months, really, I bought myself a car for me. A looker, but not crazy midlife crisis-y type car, but let's just say a two-door, sportier version of anything I've ever driven. The first thing that blew my mind, guys, is how far the technology has advanced. Now, I hear my brother talk about it all the time, how a lot of mechanics just can't keep up and keep their garages up to date because of all the diagnostic equipment to read the chips in these modern cars. And that's kind of where this story comes in. So at CES 2017, Harman, who you might know from, you know, some kind of tie-ins to that industry. And of course, Samsung had a car-specific technology on display, which I thought was really cool, even if they stole an idea from me and Exidy. About three years ago, we had this exact idea, but like so many great ideas, I'm sure you guys have these two from time to time, you never execute it or hell even talk about it again for the most part. This was one of those, but I'm glad to actually see it and goes to show you, you know what, you're thinking of it, probably hundreds of people are too, including Samsung and Harman. So yeah, they've got a film technology which you kind of embed onto windshields of a vehicle to provide mixed reality feedback, visual. It could be car diagnostic information. It could be navigation-based advertising. Like I could see this on buses, for example, or taxis in a more advertising marketing capacity. But either way, very, very cool technology. Obviously, I'm worried about distraction. If you factor in people chatting on cell phones, guys, and I'm not sure where it is where you guys live, but here, when I commute to work, it's about... 35 to 45 minute drive each way to work and then back another 35 to 45. And on the way to work, I see so many people texting and driving, uh, ladies doing makeup, I kid you not, full makeup, guys shaving, uh, and people having buffet breakfasts, like literally laying out the goods on their dashboard and passenger seat and wherever the hell and eating on the way to work. So I kind of put this technology in line with, you know what, we already have too many freaking distractions when we're driving. But still, the fact that that technology is on its way to becoming mainstream, at some point, it just got me thinking how Blade Runner-ish is it actually? Like that's exactly the type of stuff we saw in Blade Runner almost 40 years ago now. So very cool, Samsung and Harman, link below on that. Next news story, creative uses for the new Vive Tracker. So we've seen a few creative uses for the new Vive Trackers already. And I first talked about it last week. We have now seen them on those high five gloves that I didn't catch on name-wise. Those gloves where you've got one tracker on each hand. Today, other areas have come to light. So uh, first one is a firefighting experience called Flame Trainer, but F-L-A-I-M as opposed to Fire Flame. And this thing looks absolutely realistic in terms of the firefighting experience, even haptic feedback on the hose when you open the valve to, to get water to come out. The other use for it, and it was kind of jokingly discussed with the uh, author and the company behind the technology was mobile tracking using these Vive trackers in conjunction with cell phones. And, and what got that conversation started was this company doing a tie-in and it's a uh, master of shapes, their CEO, Amaral, basically using the trackers to tie in and pair with mobile phones essentially giving the person with the phone a bird's eye, eye through eye view of what the person is experiencing 
in virtual reality, which is super freaking cool. And then the conversation spun off from there into mobile room tracking, using those for some type of inside out tracking system, although it would be outside in at that point. Either way, you slice and dice it. Very cool to see these things have all these uses. We already talked about putting them on sports equipment, hockey sticks, tennis rackets for sports games. Let's just say there's no shortage and we're probably going to see some really cool, innovative stuff come to light just with these trackers over the next few weeks and months. Very, very cool. Next up, display specialist Copen unveil a tiny high resolution OLED micro display. These things look amazing. They diagonally measure about 3.5 centimeters, just around an inch on the diagonal measurement. The resolution is 2048 by 2048 pixels with 120 hertz refresh rate. Now there's some technical challenges kind of beyond the scope of this video to get into right now on why these aren't just a slam dunk to all of a sudden put in existing HMDs. Suffice it to say they're close to addressing those issues and they hope to do exactly that to further decrease the size of the VR devices, make them lighter, and certainly not compromise resolution because we've kind of taken it for granted that look, Yes, we're using 1080p, but 4K, 8K, 12K, they're all on the horizon as a given. It's kind of how we view display. It's nice to see that innovation is still going on in terms of making displays that have seemed so static and stagnant for years now, actually innovative in terms of making them smaller. So very cool. The CEO, his name is John Fan, so CEO of Copen, he said, it's roughly about $50, the per display cost for manufacturing fabrication, which is not bad at all. And I can only see that getting cheaper as we move forward. They hope to have on their roadmap, by the end of 2017, a 3K by 3K version of this micro display. Very cool. All kinds of crazy potential there. Next news piece, Road to VR has a video showing that Neutum high five glove, the one where I didn't catch on on the name until way later, showing it in action. And the author, Ben, talks about it in that video. It's about three minutes and 22 seconds about some of the shortcomings as he sees it. Nothing that's insurmountable, though. For example, in the video, you're going to see him doing a lot of stuff directly with his hands, which is the point, grabbing stuff, manipulating things. You don't see a lot of individual finger movement per se, but there are a lot of different ways of grabbing objects, which the video is really focusing on. And where some of the issues are, according to Ben, is, for example, grabbing something. So he had a few instances where he went to grab an object in the demo, but the type of hand gesture he used, and it was one that he would use in real life, right? Full-handed, open to grab something. The item in the demo actually required a two-finger pincer type, um, you know, pinching, grabbing motion instead, which is kind of counterintuitive. Even though we use that as humans, it's very situational. And that's the kind of stuff that needs to be ironed out to make this workable. And he hopes to see that to about 99% accuracy because you simply can't have every third grab attempt fail. It's just, it's not going to help immersion at all. So sure that's something that they will be able to address. So check the video out and just watch how far it's come even from last year, guys, like 12 months ago, literally amazing. Next news story has to do with this bulky locomotion device called the Icarus. And this one is spelled I-C-A-R-O-S as opposed to Greek Icarus, uh, which it's obviously named after. This is an $8,000 device. And as the author puts it, looks like a cross between VR skydiving and the torture practice of planking someone. And I got to admit, it does. And I think what 
he means with that is, and that's my concern as well, the issue with this type of loco locomotion device historically has been too large for most of us, too expensive, and too limited in terms of use. If there's only a handful of experiences or games you can use it with, it's not going to sell well. And that's been the issue for so many of these units. I don't think this one's going to be able to escape that. But uh, still a very cool play on Icarus, you know, the Mythos. Also a very good Iron Maiden song. But uh, yeah, check it out on the link. Uh, although I probably got the picture up right now. That'll give you a good idea of how bulky this thing is. Next news story, uh, SVRF tabs. And this is uh, Google Chrome extensions that basically allow tabbed open windows to host 360 degree content. In other words, most of us at any given time, if we're on the net browsing, we've got multiple tabs open. And it used to be multiple browsers before tabs back in the day. But that's just kind of a common thing. So this company, SVRF, thought that that would be an area they could kind of capitalize on. The fact that people have lots of tabs open. So Sofia Dominguez, she's the CEO and co-founder for VRF, said the following. As we've been building SVRF, we've been thinking a lot about how to get people to experience VR 360 on a daily basis and build a routine around it. We realize some of the most underutilized immersive real estate is within browser tabs. Big bright screen that takes up an entire view that people spend most of their day staring at. So we thought, why not put beautiful 360 degree content in every tab? So. Uh, I haven't had a chance to try that out, and admittedly, they didn't show a lot at the link. Uh, maybe I didn't dig hard enough on that one. That was the last story I researched today, but have a look at the link. Uh, if I find out any more, I will do an update. All right, guys, that is it for me on this Saturday. Hope you guys are having an awesome weekend. Cheers as always, and definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.